So after a two-week break, the Allianz Hurling League rolls back into action this weekend with round four of the competition. Joining me to look ahead to some of the games this weekend in Division 1 is two-time Ireland winner with Claire Sean McMahon. Shawnee, how are you keeping? I'm good, Jaron, yourself. Thanks for having me. Not too bad. Now, looking forward to a weekend of solely uh, the small ball after a weekend at the big ball. So it's good to kind of roll back into it, really, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose we've we we had a couple of weeks with there and it was great. So um and I suppose in fairness to players they needed a bit of a break anyway. So you know it's it's I suppose getting to the critical stage now because you're 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 only a matter of weeks away from the championship, so you'd expect that teams will be going, you know, full bull relief from now on. Yeah, I suppose the three weekends on trot like so I think a break weekend was kind of needed. Two yeah. rounds of matches now kind of leaves it nicely. Ahead of the championship, we're going to start, I suppose, with uh, your own county, Clare. They're away to Capsule in Parnell Park on Saturday evening against Dublin in Division 1B. It's been a, a top to turvy league campaign, I suppose it's fair to say, for Clare. Finally got off the mark with a win the last year against Leash, uh, 227 to 117, after disappointing defeats against Antrim, a game they wouldn't have expected to win. Then the game against Wexford, where they looked for large purposes as if they were going to go and win that game and then got caught towards the end so overall how do you kind of feel Claire are heading into round four this weekend I, I actually think they're in, in not a bad position I think you know if you go back to the Antrim game and look all due respect to Antrim it would have been a game that Claire would have been expected to win and uh, you know they they did play poorly it was tough place to go I suppose they were down five or six players but at the end of the day didn't play good enough and didn't probably have that desire and Antrim deservedly won it Um I thought against Wexford there was a good improvement, you know, and uh, they were very comfortable in the game, really, for the first 63 or four minutes. And Liam Curry getting sent off, really, that just lost their shape and lost composure after that. And Wexford got the two quick goals and um, they ended up losing the game. But I thought the performance was, was a good bit better than it was against Centrum, you know. And I thought they picked it up again against, against Leash. You know, in the first half, they, they had a lot of wides. So there was only a couple of points in it after playing against the win playing with the wind um but i thought they played very efficiently in the second half you know very smart how to use the ball and got a lot of good score so while you know a lot of people wouldn't be saying clear in a great place i i think they're not too bad a place uh they're starting to get lads back uh colin galvin was back the last day would be obviously hoping that david mcinoney will get back fairly soon as well you know so if they can just get a bit more minutes into into these lads um boots now the next day it'll be it'll be huge uh plus like you know and, and in fairness they're going to have a good test. Dublin, Dublin are a good team. Like they've been going fairly solid, and you know, you know, you're in in Parnell Park. You you get nothing easy up there. Yeah, they've done quite a fair bit of experiment as well. I suppose most teams would do in the league. Obviously, John Conlon, he's played there before, club level, but going in at centre half back. And we've seen Aidan McCarthy really kind of relish a foot forward this season. He's put up some big, big scores. A lot of people are kind of maybe critical of, of Conlon, well, not maybe critical, but kind of maybe the position decision to put him there at centre back against Antrim it did, many of you felt it didn't kind of work but credit to Brian he's trying to persist and stick with it so how would you kind of feel it's going so far putting the likes of um, uh, John Conlon and Aidan McCarthy in new positions I suppose themselves in the clear team well I suppose look it's it's a very big gamble in one sense because you know typically you might do this during the league in the normal league and you'd have you know a good number of challenge matches you'd finish your league you might have five or six weeks in the ch to the championship but you know, in fact, Clare had five games before they played the first round of the championship. So, and really, for some, for someone like John Connor to go up there and try and to try it out, you got to give it three games anyway. And then, if it doesn't work, you have two games left. You know what I mean? So, it, it, it's it's been a gamble. And to be honest, I I think he hasn't done badly. Um, I think you know, I suppose people are probably expecting or wanting if if it's going to work that he's absolutely outstanding straight away and it's shown that it's it's the right move but i think i think the move has worked out okay i think um you know he's a great presence there he holds the middle very well you know and he's a good distributor of the ball like so i don't think he's doing badly there at all and i, and I think at this stage they're going to stick with it and to be honest i think claire really did need to reshape their half back line after last year i think there wasn't enough presence in it and um you know, they did look in trouble in some of the matches. So, you know, Dermot Ryan has been outstanding wing back from the, the, the few games I've seen. Um, and I, they actually started Aidan McCarthy wing back in the first game and he he's ended up all over the place. I think his best turn was nearly against Wexford when Tony Kelly uh, had to go off. He came out midfield. So he's gone 
uh, every place. And, you know, I suppose he has the capability of doing it. Like, But maybe David McInerney might come into the, into the halfback line. But I think Conlon has done okay. I think, and at this stage, you know, I think it's probably worth persevering now because it's nearly at this stage too big a change to, to, because you're reshaping your team completely at that stage. So I think he's done okay. And, um, you know, I, you'd hope that with the extra games, he'll get better in the, in the role as well. Yeah, not only as well with a new league campaign, you're going to try out players in different positions. You're also going to try and bring in new players. And that little bit of squad depth players like Aaron uh, Fitzgerald, Paul D. Fitzpatrick, uh, Shane Meaton, Mark Rogers, Keen Galvin, just some of the players so far to feature in this league campaign. How would you feel they've uh, gelled in so far and who's kind of stood out most for you? Yeah, I think, you know, uh, while while the team wouldn't be old, it does need an impetus of, of fresh blood and it's great to see. And that's what that's... There's some of the gambles you take in some of the matches, and maybe if we'd gone with a more experienced team against Centrum, we might have won the game. But like you have to blood some players, and and in fairness to Brian, he's done that. So I think they've done okay. I think uh, Mark Rogers uh, didn't feature against um, Antrim, and he, he struggled against Wexford. But uh, I think it turns out afterwards he 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 was he was sick before the game, but he was very sharp the last day, um, and uh, Shane Meehan then came on and. I thought it looked very, very lively when he's when he's been on. Uh, Aaron Fitzgerald, the first I saw him was the last day uh, against Leash, and, and and to be honest, I thought I was impressed with him. I think he's definitely one that uh, you know he's a really good physical presence. He's he's coming from the football background, so he's really a good tackler, you know, a good defender. So uh, I, I I think he's definitely one that uh, would be worth a, a, another shot. Um, but overall, you know, even King Galvin, young King Galvin, came in there. He's only eighteen, nineteen. This is the only place for them to learn, and uh, it's great that they're getting the getting getting thrown into it. Yeah, you can't help but kind of feel when you talk about Claire as well. You talk about off the field issues, and it just kind of feels like they can't even help themselves to, sometimes because they got caught up in the Wexford kind of COVID situation as well. When two of their players were identified as close contacts, I suppose look, Brian Owens had was he had to say in that the county board and kind of stood by him as well. Add that on top as well of all the kind of controversy with the Carroll Open situation before the leagues even start. It just doesn't kind of really kind of help. Um, morale as well when you're probably a little bit kind of under pressure because of results yeah I, I think to be honest it's it's been very disappointing overall I think the the COVID situation is 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 really unusual you know um, like we don't want to probably go too far into it but at the end of the day two extra players got COVID unfortunately um, you know and Two only two Clare players are identified as close contacts. No extra player who was in who were in they spent the night in a hotel. They would have had a, a breakfast, an evening meal together, pre-match meal. They were in the dressing room together. They were in huddles together. No extra players identified as a close contact, and two Clare players are so. That I can see really. I feel very 100% agree with Brian Lohan why he's so angry about that. Um, and he has had a lot of challenges through the year, and that, that was just another another one that that really shouldn't have happened, but. You know, he's had issues with the county board. I don't feel the county board have backed him in any way as much as they should be backing him. Um, he's, for me, the greatest player to have ever hurled for Clare. And when he was hurling, he gave himself completely for the team. You know, there was no ego with him. He just wanted the team to win. And that's exactly what he's doing in this role. He wants to give everything to the team so that they can win and that Clare can, can progress. And he's not getting the support of the county board or as much of it as he should be. And it's just not good enough, really. And, you know... Ultimately, to have a chance, you need everything going, everyone pulling together, and you know he just needs a bit more support than he's getting. And you know, I, I, I've I've great respect for him. I think what he's done and the way he's carrying himself is fantastic. And he just needs that support. And he and hopefully, from now on, he starts to get more of it because he simply has not got enough of it up to now. Yeah, I was just even looking at the, the Carl Oaten situation before I came on here as well. I think I've seen something that opened in. 2012, if you think back to that year, that would have been the first year Clare won the three in a row, done the train one at Ireland, the senior at Ireland, then followed in 2013. So you kind of would have felt everything was so rose in the garden with Clare kind of hurling. Like, where do you kind of just feel that it's kind of gone wrong in them times? Well, we obviously we've heard about, you know, lack of facilities that maybe haven't kicked on in Clare alone since, but you think back to like the, that three in a row and train one team, as I mentioned, they got a senior Ireland in that middle of the year as well. And, you know, they've only won at Ireland semi final to kind of show for its sense. It's a kind of a sense of, I suppose a league title you could say as well in 2016, but you still kind of feel it's a sense of a of a lost generation because most of that team now I think is between 26, 27, and 30. So it's kind of off. Yeah, I think 
look, we, we would have all had hoped for um, an awful lot more after, you know, the 21s in particular, and then obviously the senior getting to the senior, winning the senior All-Ireland at 13, you know. I, you know, it, you have to say it as well, though, that All-Ireland's a very hard one, you know what I mean? And um, and there's absolutely no guarantee you'll get there, and we, we are the absolute proof of it. I suppose the disappointing thing is that we probably weren't, we're not as competitive. I mean, since 13, we've we've been to semi-final once, and that that is really disappointing. And uh, why that is, I, I I couldn't tell you. You know, it's just it probably just hasn't happened for a number of reasons. But you know, I think I just think the whole thing in Clare needs needs a lift. It needs change. Um, you know, uh, the, I I think the county board needs to be changed at this stage. Um, you know, and it's not that's not laying all the blame on them, but. You know, it, it it seems to have gone stale, and I think Cahir Lohan probably typifies that. Cahir Lohan is the same, pretty much the same now as it was in 2012 or 2013. You know, and you know, with a few small additions. So it's you know, and and change seems to be on 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 the way, but it has to come quickly. You know what I mean? Other counties are moving on. You, you hear of other counties, and they're hiring operations manager and finance manager, and you know, they're they're bringing huge amount of money and fundraising in, and they have different initiatives going. You know, we're only putting an, uh, a five-year strategic committee in place now like this should have gone in 10 years ago probably like you know so it's just things have gone stale and things need to be changed and you know ultimately that's that's where it's at and i think until we get that change we're, we're not going to progress to, to to where we want to go just fine for finish up in this game we'll chat a small bit as well about dublin so it's look probably on paper they've won the two games they're expected to win it beating Leash 30 points to 119 and then Antrim the last day quite comfortably 126 to 118 they were 10 points ahead of one stage in the second half so they were never in any danger of losing that game as well like Donald Burke was some player that caught was someone that caught a lot of eyes during the championship last year he's kind of followed that up again with high tallies mainly kind of from freeze I still kind of just feel from a kind of Dublin kind of point of view if you look back to last year's league campaign as well they won the games were kind of expected I was at that game in Crow Park where they played at Wexford, and you kind of thought that was a missed opportunity to lay down kind of a mark and stay, but you conceded a couple of late goals. You kind of still feel like, from a Dublin point of view, if they really want to kind of put themselves in the shape of a, in a conversation of being serious contenders, that they need to lay down a marker, especially at home on Saturday evening. They do, and I, I think you're probably right there. I think, you know, what we've seen from Dublin in the last couple of years has been, you know, probably winning the games they should have won, but not really taking that step forward. And, you know, they, as you said, they've had a couple of chances to do that. Uh, on paper, for me, they look very strong. You know, they've owned a Donald full back there. Liam Rush has gone back centre back. Um, Danny Sutcliffe seems to be going well up in the, uh, up in the forwards again. And, you know, they have the the Burke and, and Hayes and these guys as well, you know, so they, they have good players, there's no doubt about it. Um, and, you know, maybe it's a small thing that can make a click and and it's the kind of thing that if they get one win, they could really kick on because, you you know, they have potential, they have physique, maybe they're lacking a couple of really top quality forwards, you know, uh, that you probably need to, to really go the distance. But, you know, Dublin on their day are a match for anyone and that's the thing with them. And, and I suppose they've probably just been that bit too inconsistent in games as well between games and during games and um and i'm sure look they'll be trying to rectify it on on this weekend but really you know it's for dublin for a team like dublin you know having a good league campaign at this stage isn't what they're looking for they, they really need to, to to lay down america in the championship this year and but i think they'll just need to get that bit more consistency into their play and between games now we look at the other games in division one b as well as well, and the game that actually kicks it off on Saturday at three o'clock in Carrick Park is Antrim versus Wexford. Obviously, two defeats for Antrim since that victory against Clare, but it's the first time they're back in Carrick and Park since that victory, and they'll have a couple of fans at the game, so that'll be a big benefit as well. Wexford and Kilkenny, I should mention, there was a bit of small ball last week, and that game was rescheduled uh, last Sunday in Northern Park. And yes, yeah. Heavy, heavy defeat for Wexford going down two twenty-seven to now 23 against Kilkenny. Look, we talked about the whole COVID situation. Um, we worked for them every day. It's like, like Davies kind of said, look, it's, it's done and we moved on. Like, you could kind of say that, like, like, you know, I think they didn't get the go ahead and need to go back training only three or four days before that game. I know they came in for a couple of criticism, but the fact that they were heavily caught up in all that couldn't have been helpful as preparations for this match. No, it couldn't because, you know, teams have been so far out of action up to now, you know what I mean? So every, every training session you get is vital and 
the last thing any team want is another break inside in the middle of it now once you're after getting going. So, um, you know, so it's, look, it's hard to know, was it just that or what? But, I, I, like, Wexford seem to be struggling for, for me to, you know, they're not racking up big scores. They're not creating an awful lot of chances. You know, I know they've had a number of wides, but they seem to be taking a lot of their shots from out the field. And, you know, I just wonder... I wonder myself, is the sweeper system suiting them? Because, I mean, if you look at... They have, they have, you could put six forward, quality forwards down there for Wexford, big physical guys who can win their own ball. And, um, you know, so I, I'm just wondering, is it really suiting them? But, look, in fairness to Davey, he is his way of doing it, and it's been successful in the past, and he's probably not going to change it now. And certainly, Wexford could have a big year yet, you wouldn't know. But it just doesn't seem to be clicking for them at the moment. Now, I think that... Uh, the game at the weekend is a big game for them. You know what I mean? Like, there's no doubt going to Antrim is a tricky place to go. Antrim will look at this as another opportunity. They've been down. They, they counted for themselves well against Kilkenny. They'll be glad to get back up there. They'll think Wexford aren't probably going that well. They'll see it as another opportunity for them. So, so Antrim will come with everything on on, on the weekend. And, um, you know, Wexford will need to be ready. And I think uh, it's really a game that Wexford have to win. And I think the pressure's on them. And, and I think, you know... That's sometimes not a bad thing because sometimes, with due respects to Antrim, sometimes teams can feel, well, we should have enough to beat them. I, I think Wexford will be well prepped for for the game this weekend uh, because I think they'll need to be. And um, I think they badly need a win. I think they will get a win. Now, you were kind of just saying that like, something just isn't quite fully just clicking with Wexford just yet, whether it's in the scoring department or whatever. And like Brendan Cummins was saying, he's, he's an independent on Monday that he still kind of feels there's a hangover from that. Ireland's been against Tipperary in 2019. But I was kind of thinking, if you think back to the league last year before COVID, Wexford were flying again, though. As I mentioned, they had that win against Dublin. They, um, they bet Kilkenny as well at home as well. They were actually preparing for a league quarterfinal against Galway. There's no doubt about that. That was a lot of big crowd to Chadwick's Wexford Park. I was making a similar point to Stephen McDonald, former MA player, about the football that with Galway, they were flying it before the COVID last year and you know, their form has been poor since. I think it's actually more of a case that COVID has disrupted Wexford's form as opposed to still suffering from that defeat against Tipperary nearly 24 months ago. Yeah, I, I look, I, I'm not too sure about uh, the, the the tip defeat, you know, like players get on with it, you know what I mean? You you win games you shouldn't win, you lose games you shouldn't lose at times and there's, there's huge despair and disappointment but there's other games coming and, you know, I, I think that, I, I wouldn't agree with Brendan on that one, to be honest with you. I think that that game is too far away for it to be hanging over at this stage. Um, I think it's possibly just maybe it is COVID. Um, I do think at times Wexford are overplaying the ball a small bit. You know, I think they have big physical guys there who can win their own ball and sometimes I feel they should be just letting the ball into them. But that's the way they're playing and it's not a criticism of Davey or anything like that. That's how they're playing it. It has worked very well at times for them as well. I mean, in fairness, they were outstanding that year they got to the semi-final, but it just hasn't clicked for them yet since then, I think. And uh, I, I wouldn't put it down to the hangover. I think it's it, for whatever reasons it's it's not it's, it hasn't clicked but it could click and it could kick on very much so again and i'm sure that's what they're hoping will happen yeah it's uh it will be an interesting game right on saturday antrim definitely be out for a scalp again actually antrim know as well if they can win that game they're going to be safe before that you know what many people will felt with the do or die game the last day against leash and that then brings us on to the last game on sunday at a quarter two in the moor park it's leash versus kenny it's top three bottom kenny as we mentioned that impressive victory last weekend against Wexford, wrapping up 227. You've seen TJ Reid chipping in with 118. You know, very, very good response to him after he didn't play in the Antrim match as well. But they've, you know, had scores come in from a lot of places this, this season so far. You think back to James Bergen, is doing really well. Billy Ryan got one for the last day. It is hard to see anything other than another victory and continue maintaining that 100% record. Yeah, I think so. I think they are moving well. Uh, there's no doubt about it. Um, you know, they probably haven't had enough tough tests that said that Brian Cody would like. But in fairness to Cody, he has his team fairly up for it every day they play. And, um, you know, they do seem to be performing well. Uh, they've they've kind of changed their style a bit. It certainly has gone from just a long ball down the field. They work it fairly well now. Uh, but they're still getting the ball good, good and early and often into their full forward line as well. And, you know... It seems now that TJ Reid is going to be positioned inside and, you know, no more danger cement to have close to the goal. And, you know, I think he got 118 or something the last day. Like, so he's just a super player. And, and I think he, he, you know, 
when he's on your team, you've 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 a, you've a chance of beating whoever you're playing. So I, I look against Leash, they they should win it with due respect to Leash. I think um, it's great to see Ch- uh, Cheddar back there with them. I think they'll come again. I think they uh, they just probably need a bit of time now again to get back. And I suppose that's the one negative thing about this whole COVID for certainly for a new management coming in, you're just not given the time to you know get we'll say get your your ideas across and get the practice going. So that's probably gone against Leash, but. Uh, they will fight and they'll have great heart about them and they have some very good hurlers up there as well. So I think, but look, there's no doubt if I had to put money, it would it, certainly be Uncle Kenny to win on, uh, on the, at the weekend. It is another thing, Uncle Kenny, as well. How important as well, the bit by bit, to get more and more minutes back into Adrian Muller, another full 70 under his belt last Sunday after playing the full game against Andrew as well. You know, he's the captain this year. He was away, obviously, with injury last year, but, you know, you, you still probably would feel that even though they won a Leinster Championship last year, that maybe his presence was actually really missing that latter stages against Waterford when the tide was going against them. Yeah, I think the the, the impression you have at Kilkenny now, maybe uh, being, standing back and a bit removed from it, is that they're hugely reliant on TJ Reid. You know, and certainly that was the that would have been the impression I would have got from watching it on television last year that, you know, uh, totally, totally not reliant on TJ Reid. So they really need to have the few extra forwards back um and and motoring it and like mullen is a quality forward there's no question about that uh now coming back from cruciate is a very very difficult thing to do and it takes a lot of time so i'd say brian cody is delighted that every minute he gets um you know at the moment we'll, we'll certainly bring him on a ton like so I, I can see him featuring in all the games as long as fatigue isn't coming in the last thing you want is pulling the muscle or something like that but they do need more tj reed needs more help up there you know ultimately you know they're not going to win the all ireland with uh, with just TJ Reid more than up front. So, um, and it's not saying he's the only forward up there. They have other ones. They have good players, John Donnelly and a few like that. But, you know, Mullen is a big addition to them. And um, a fit Mullen and a going well Mullen is a huge throw in there beside TJ Reid. Yeah, we're looking ahead now to the games in, in Division 1A. I suppose it's hard not to be drawn to that game in the LIT Gaelic Grounds on Saturday evening. We have the meeting of Limerick versus Cork. Obviously, you know, this time last year, or I suppose by the tail end of the year, we'll talk about Limerick and just that. You know, who's going to get near them next year and everything else like that? Albeit, why it is only the league, it's still three games that will win. This one does become a little bit interesting because I know there are our form and it could do with a win for morale. But does John Kyle look at that point of view that we just need a win to get back and running, or he'd be looking at the point of view, look, I know come championship we're going to be fine. We've got these boys again in four weeks' time in a much more important game, more kind of shadow boxing, or it's going to be a case of we need to get a win to get back up and going. I think, look, I think. You know, Limerick have two All-Irelands won the last three years. I mean, they're not going to be worried about whether they lose a couple of games in the league or draw a couple of matches. You know, there, there, there's going to be no panic buttons pressed press there. Um, so uh, I think John Kiley's focus without question will be on the championship match in four weeks' time. But I think at the same time, no manager goes out to uh, lose a game or, you know, if, if, if you're trying to be too smart about it and you know, pulling players and trying fellas in different positions just to try and throw the other team, that doesn't work either. So I think whatever team he puts out, I can't see him putting out a full strength team, but he will put out a reasonably strong team. He'll give some guys a run and uh, as well. And I think they'll be going full ball to win it then because otherwise, you know, you, you just can't send the team out without any without any other thought other than winning. So, uh, but I can't see him playing his, his, his full 15, but um, I think they'll take a win. I'd say they, they, they'd like to get it. Obviously, they want to win every game, but I don't think they'll be too too bothered about uh, the fact that they, you know, they, they've lost a couple of the last matches. Yeah, along with uh, Kilkenny Cork, the only other unbeaten team in this league, one of the foreign teams of the country with, with two wins and that draw against Tipperary. We've heard a lot of people say over the last kind of week or so with the football that like how a big difference it's made to having the league in the summertime as opposed to wintertime, much more free flow and open football. Could you say the same thing from a core kind of point of view? Because we know how much they've struggled in the league in the past when it's been played in the springtime. We've seen last year we've been in winter in Ireland. The fast quick round for a, for a league campaign this year certainly seems to be suiting them when it comes to registering green flags anyway. Yeah, I, I think there's, there's an element to that, but I think... Um... I think there's an element as well that Cork are, you know, seem to be a different animal altogether than, than, than they were last year. You know, I think they're, even from the, the point of view of their, their work rate, and I think that's a huge indicator of a team. Like, um, 
I think that there's a huge pickup in, in, in their work rate. They obviously, whatever they're doing, they're, you know, they're trying to score goals, you know what I mean? And they're working on scoring goals and and they're scoring goals, you know, and I suppose that's the one thing you would have always associated with Cork is that, you know, they, they will have quality forwards and people who are able to score goals. And this Cork team has pace, you know, and I suppose if you have a plan to try and score goals and you have pace and you have good shooters, you know, they're 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 a very dangerous team, and I think they have they have shown that. And for me, they've nearly been the farm team in the league so far. So, again, I'm sure they'll be watching uh, for the championship game in four weeks' time. But I think, um, and and I can't see them starting a full strength team either. But I think whatever team goes out will go full bull at it. And uh, uh, so I'd, I'd expect a good game, but I, I still think the, the the championship match in four weeks' time will be a different will be a different uh, story altogether. Yeah, two other teams facing each other in Division 1A this uh, weekend. They won't worry us for each other in, in the short term future in the Championship. And they're going in Waterford. They meet Salt Hill in Pierce Stadium at 3.45 on Sunday. Just from a Waterford kind of point of view, because you think back to the opening league game when they got well beaten by Cork shifting the five goals. Instantly, kind of people were thinking, jumping the gun, kind of thinking, oh, is this going to be another 2018 again, another hangover after losing their Ireland final? So, albeit it's only the league, and I know. Limerick ends the match with, with 13 players, with Seamus Fang and sent off early on and Kyle Hayes early on. Just how important was it for them to kind of make a, a big statement win against one of the big boys by beating Limerick the last time out? Yeah, it was. It was a big statement. Like, And yeah, and to be fair uh, to Waterford today against Cork, you know, I think Cork scored three goals in the last three or four minutes. Like, I think at one stage, Waterford, Waterford were poor. They were up and down in the game. I think at one stage, they were 10 or 11 points down, but they brought it back to two or three points, you know, and dominated the game for a period and then shipped a couple of goals at the end. So the, I think the scoreline flattered Cork, to be to be fair, that day. Um, I think you have to say there's a great bit of resilience about Waterford, you know, I mean... As you say, it would have been very easy to have a hangover after losing the All-Ireland last year. And then you lose Tyke de Burka, you lose Parik Mahoney, and you lose uh, Stephen O'Keefe. You know, three absolute mainstays and pillars of the team. You know, and they've just got on with it. And, um, you know, they've rallied. They got, as we said, they got the beating against Cork and they came back and now they're after beating Nimerick. So I think in fairness to, to Waterford, there's something about them. I think they're... They, you know, they, they'll take a lot of beating. They're tough. I, I'm very impressed with Liam Cahill. I think he, you know, he just, he he he, he drives the team and there's no, he accepts no excuses. And, you know, and it's obvious the team is playing for him. So, yeah, I, I have great respect for Watford. And I think, you know, the one thing you, you, you're you guaranteed from Watford now is whoever whoever they're playing against are going to have a huge battle against them. So, and I and I think you're going to have a great game on, 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 on Sunday as well because, you're at the stage now when you've really only two games left, two preparation games left to the championship. So, you know, you want to be getting your best players out there. You want them to be getting game time and you want them to be hitting form. So I think uh, Sunday has the makings of, of, of a really good game there. But Galway are moving well as well, you know. Yeah, just looking at Galway, like from the outside kind of looking in, seems to be still a couple of decisions to be made, I think, come championship time. We've seen Joe Canning came on in midfield against Limerick and he started there against... Um, Tipperary the last day. We've seen Garrow McInerney been tried at full back in the first two matches. Then we had Dottie Burke play at full back the last day. We've seen Pork Man have been slotting at six of all the end games. It kind of makes you wonder is it going to be a case of, well, you presume Dottie Burke, you know, the numerous all stars they have, he's still going to be the number one player to pick at full back. It's kind of then kind of leave you wondering maybe where will Garrow McInerney fit into this team or do you still think come championship he will slot back into a centre back role and you'll see Pork Man more in his wing back or sweeper role? Yeah, it's it's a very good question, and it's it's a kind of a funny one in some sense because I I would have assumed like that Dahi Burke would absolutely be um, fullback. You know, he without doubt I'd say the best fullback in the game at the moment. Um, so if he wasn't available to play, you would be putting someone in there who probably isn't going to be there in the championship. If you know what I mean, obviously not a very weak player. Like, but if if Garon McInerney is going to be centre back in the championship it didn't make much sense to put him back in kind of as a stopgap for Dahi Burke while he's out for a few games. And now you're only going to bring him back in for the last two games of the league. So it would suggest to me that they're not fully convinced to grow at McInerney. I, and I don't know whether that's the case or not. He, he, he's been an excellent centre-back as well. Um, but I, I can't see if Dahi Burke is fit him not playing. Um, 
Now, maybe he will just start straight out to centre back. Maybe that's the way they'll go with it. I think Mannion is a super hurler. He's probably a better hurler than McInerney. Uh, but McInerney is a great physical presence there, very athletic, holds the middle very, very well, and has done very well there. So, you know, maybe they're not that concerned. Maybe they're very set in their mind who can play a three and six. But um, I'd be just a bit unsure myself as to why, if if Garo McInerney is going to be six in the championship, why have they been playing him three? If you know that Dahi Brook is going to come back in there, so they do, I oh, think, well. have a few places to fit, you know, or to form up on. Yeah, I didn't just even on the Joe Kenny situation at, at midfield. I was listening to a podcast a couple weeks ago, where former Galway manager and John McIntyre were saying that he thinks Kenny, because of obviously his range of scoring from long distance, he can be such a threat from midfield that you know maybe there's going to be more space and to roam around where things might be more mm-hmm. clogged up in the forward. Do you think it actually could be a runner to see him in a midfield role come a championship game? Their opening game, I think, is going to be against either Dublin or Antrim. I, I actually think it could be because, uh, and it, in some sense, I think it's because the space is tighter. I think I don't think he's going to play in the full forward line because I think the way the game has gone now, you you probably need a real bit of pace inside there, and he probably doesn't have that now. Um, I mean, even the game against um, Limerick when he came on there, like he was only on the, on there for uh, I'd say ten minutes and. You know, he snapped three or four balls and just pinged some beautiful balls into space and a couple of scores came off him. So I can see him playing in the middle of the field from the point of view that, you know, he won't be relying on much, as much in his pace. He has the physical presence. He's brilliant hands. You know, if he gets that ball into his hands, he'll 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 be like a quarterback there. He'll spread around. So it, if any place I would see him is he's playing midfield. I think I, I can certainly see him seeing action there in games. Um, so I think... They've, they have some questions to answer, but I think they have, they're have they in a good place from the point of view of the players they have to answer. I think they, I think Galway have a serious, serious squad there. And I think for me, they're absolutely up there with Limerick as regards uh, as a team and physically as a team as well. So they have questions to answer, but I, I, think, I don't think they have any gap to fill where they don't have someone for it. I think it's more a case of seeing where the pieces fit rather than there's a big gap and we have to try and put uh, around a square into a round hole or something like that, you know. Yeah, I suppose it's one of those where we have to wait and see as, as time yeah. goes on. Just finally then to wrap up in Division 1A, it's got Westmead versus Tipperary at 2pm in TEG Cusick Park. I suppose, again, this is going to raise question marks about another big victory. Westmead have already shipped a 30-point defeat against Galway and a 33-point defeat the last day against Cork. It should be mentioned, they did only lose by three points in between that against Waterford. I suppose, look, Shane O'Brien probably knew, given the nature of this group with four monster teams in Galway, that they were probably going to finish bottom. They were going to be facing for a relegation battle, more than likely against Antrim or for Leash. But just kind of long term, going into the Joe McDonald Cup, which is a competition they would have aspirations of winning because they would be playing a higher standard as opposed to the rest of the teams. It can't be much use. I know, yes, they're playing against the top teams, but when you're on a scoring difference, I think of minus 66 after three games, it just can't be healthy. Well, it's not, right? It's not, and it's not ideal. Um, but at the end of the day, like, the only way you learn is the hard way. And, you know, like, Westmead will still be better for it. If their players are still prepared to commit and work hard at it, they'll, they'll be better for the experience. You know what I mean? It's the, you know, you you will only get better by, by playing and marking better players. And unfortunately for teams like Westmead, that means there's going to be hard, hard lessons along the way. But if they're willing to learn the lessons, they'll be better for it. You know what I mean? And if and if they improve again, they'll be better again next year. You know what I mean? So it's tough. It does. Um, but ultimately, as Ireland people, we want more teams coming through. We don't want to keep it to the eight or nine because, you know, that'll become six or seven and then we'll be down to another, you know, we've seen where Offaly have gone and hopefully Offaly are on the way back. But, you know, it's 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 harder to get back up to that level and it, you could certainly go down the levels very very quickly so i think you know whatever needs to be done to encourage the west meads and the leashes and the offices to keep coming we need to do that and, and in, along the way i think that's going to mean putting them up against the big boys letting them learn the hard way and and hopefully that they can take it on and improve so mm-hmm. it's not nice to say there's 60 points minus on on, on the scoring different spot there's no easy way around it either yeah, like in, very, in fairness to Westmead, as we point out, I know Waterford ended the game with, with 13 players and made number changes, but still only lost by three points down there. Yeah. And even throughout, throughout the years, in fairness, and they've always showed they can mix with the big boys now and then. There's not that off long ago, they gave Galway a couple of scares in the championship. I remember as well, even 
two or three years ago, a week after the loss of Joe McDonough final, that preliminary quarter final, they actually gave Wex for a decent run in Mullingar. So hopefully, fingers crossed, with home advantage, they might be able to put up a more respectable figure. And we won't be talking about um, wide margins again, maybe on Monday morning. Just from a Tipperary kind of point of view, and again, you know, similar to Galway, kind of fullback position seems to be kind of one that kind of quite interests me here. Brian McGrath has been a very, very talented underage player, you know, at minor level and 21 level, finally given his chance in the league, started the first two games. Then we see Paul DiMara come in there the last day, but you have someone like, for me, in their team, Ronan Marr, all-star fullback of 2019, was still used there in the championship last year. I still thought he was probably one of Tip's best performers. You know, it's, it's again, you talk about we're only two games away from championship, and I, and I still think, to be brutally honest, Liam Sheedy is still very, very uncertain over this position. He, he does seem to be, yeah. Well, he probably would disagree, I suppose, but I suppose, yeah, suppose sure. looking at it, you know. <laughs> um, but, I hope he's not uh, <laughs> and and in fairness to him, I suppose he, he's got a lot more right than he's got wrong. Um, you know, and I suppose, look, at the end of the day, he probably is. I mean, look, you know what you get from Paddy Maher. You know what you get from Rona Maher. Uh, there have been two absolutely brilliant players, and you will be able to put him back in there if there's an issue in the game. I don't, I, it's not that I think you don't have someone for the position, you know, but they are probably trying to... Uh, you know, maybe they're trying to find a spot for Paddy. Like, you know, maybe at this stage they're feeling maybe he's not suitable to wing back. I, you know, I'm not sure what the thinking is, but you know, Seamus Kennedy is now going to centre back. Seems to be doing well there, and Ronan Maher has been excellent wing back. So, um, and probably you know, in some sense, um, Brian McGrath may be more suited to playing wing back than than than, than full back. So it it might play play out that way that you have Brian McGrath wing and party party full. Um, and to be honest, if you, if they do have that, I don't think there's any real weakness in it. And look, if you go back to Ronan Maher, you've no weakness there either. So I don't think I don't think it's a major issue for them. I think they just probably need to firm it up and 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 stick with it. And I'm sure they'll do that soon enough. Yeah, definitely no doubt about that. Um, Sean, so we'll wrap it up there for this evening. Anyway, thanks for taking time out and chat to us this evening. And hopefully it'll be another memorable weekend of and we'll talk about for all the right reasons, all on field activities and no rules or anything else like that that always seems to dictate the Monday morning talk, whether it's football or hurling over the last couple of weeks. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Hopefully now we'll get it going again now and um looking forward to, as you said, to a good weekend and a good good hopefully months, two months of it uh coming on now into the summer. Fingers crossed. Thanks, Johnny. Thank you.